there, Cliff. What you reading? Hiya, Henry. I'm reading Aesop's Fables. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Aesop's mm -hmm. Fables, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, one thing. Yeah. Uh, what's an Aesop? An Aesop? That's not a what. That's uh, he's a who. Oh, he's a who? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, who was Aesop then? Aesop, he was this guy, he lived a long time ago, and he told, uh, he told fables. Oh, I see. That's why they call them Aesop's fables. That's right. Stands to reason, mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense, except for one thing. What? What's a fable? A fable, that's a, well, it's a story, and it uses uh, animals, usually. Yeah. And uh, what happens in the story leads us to a moral. Aha! Mm -hmm. Aha! Aesop's fables all have morals, huh? That's right. Oh, well, that's very, very clear. I understand everything except for one thing. What's that? What's a moral? A moral is the story that, uh, it's the lesson that we learn from the story. Oh, I see, I yeah. see. The lesson, they all have lessons, huh? That's right. You get a lesson without even going to school? Nope. Pretty good, yeah. pretty good. I like that part a lot. I like um, uh, can you give me kind of like a little for example? A for example? You yeah. want a you wanna fable? Yeah, I do. Okay. I, do. I got one right yeah. here. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Can now, I get comfy? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> I'm comfy. You're comfy? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, when I do this, you have to be very quiet. Quiet? Oh, I'll be quiet as a mouse. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> comfy? Yeah. All right. This one is called The Mice in Council. Ooh, I like it already. All right. For many years, the mice had been living in constant dread of their mortal enemy, the cat. Boogie, boogie, boogie. Ha, ha, ha. They decided to call a meeting to determine the best means of handling the situation. Many plans were discussed and many plans were rejected. At last, a young mouse got up. Quiet. I propose, he said, that a bell be hung around the cat's neck. Mm -hmm. Then, whenever the cat is near, we shall always be able to escape. Good idea. Sounds good to me, yeah. The young mouse sat down amidst tremendous applause. Hooray! Yippee! Hoopla! Yahoo! Yip! <laughs> the suggestion was put to a motion and passed almost unanimously. Unanimously? Unanimously. Oh, unanimously. <clears throat> but just then, an old mouse. Hello, old mousey. Yeah. Mm hmm. Who, yeah, the old mouse, who had sat silent all the time, rose to his feet and said, Where's the cheese? No. Where's the cheddar? No. Where's the Kraft single slice? No, he didn't say any of that stuff. What did he say? He said, My friends, it takes a young mouse to think of a plan so ingenious and yet so simple. Huh. Mm -hmm. With a bell around the cat's neck to warn us, we shall all be safe. I have but one brief question to put to the supporters of this plan. What was the question? What was the question? Tell me the question. What was the question? I can't wait. Tell me. Which one of you is going to put the bell around the cat's neck? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I didn't think of that. Yeah, and the moral of the story. The lesson we learn. The lesson yeah. we learn is some things are more easily said than done. Oh, yeah. Isn't that? Yeah. yeah, it was a lot easier to say, let's put a bell around the cat's neck than it was to actually put a bell around, around the, the cat's neck. That's Naturally, right. Naturally, I get it. You get how That's this neat. works? Mm -hmm. That's how a fable works. That's huh? how a fable works. Oh, nifty. Yeah. Hey, uh, do you have any more of those just sure. hanging around here? Sh I got a million of them. Really? Yeah. Can you tell me another one? I can. I, sure, I can tell you another one. Okay. <clears throat> okay. What you got? Okay. This one is called The Story of the Tortoise and the Hare. America and welcome to the Tortoise and the Hare All-American Cup Finals. Yes, this is the big one, the one that will decide the contest between the tortoise and his arch rival, the hare. The crowd is going wild as the contestants pass in front of the judges' stand. Let's see if we can get close enough to get a word with them. Oh, Mr. Hare, Mr. Hare. Speedy tea here at your service. Yeah, that's a nice jacket, by Thank the way. You. Yes, well, b by the way, what does the T Jeez. in my name stands Damn. for? T in the name stands for that. I see, I see. Well, it's very good very to Very good to meet you, too. Well, I have a few questions, questions you like I... to ask. Ask away. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Good. 
Is it true? Absolutely that you... not. I've been training day and night to get in shape for this race. But don't you think? Not a chance. The tortoise is too slow. I see. How did he? That was just a lucky shot. I see. Now I understand that you belong to the F R A. That's right. Stands for Fast Runners of America. Fast Runners, Runners of America. America. I became a member when I won my hundredth race. Now is it very difficult? No, nah, I'm just speedy by nature. I see. Well, Mr. Hare, it's been it's swell, swell talking to talking. you too. But the race is about to begin. <laughs> well, I'd hate to take up any more of your valuable time. He certainly is a quick little bunny, but wait a minute, his arch rival, the tortoise, is coming up the walk. Here he is. <laughs> hello. <laughs> yes, hello, and, and you are? Yes, I am. No, no, I mean, I mean, what is your name? Ooh, my name yes. is Pokey. Pokey? P. P. Tortoise, Pokey P. Tortoise. Tortoise. Yes. Well, uh, what does the what does the P in your name stand for? The P in your name in my name stands for stands for what does it stand for? Pokey, Pokey. I see. Pokey, Pokey, Tortoise. Well, yep. now I understand that you're in top shape for today's race. Yep. I'm in top shape for today's race. Top shape. Shape. For today's race. For You're in top shape for today's race. Today's, today's race. Competition. <laughs> well, oh. do, do, now I understand that you belong to the SRA. Well, yeah. I belong to the SRA. To yeah. the SRA. SRA. A. A. S. R S R A A mm -hmm. stands for what, what stands for what? What does it stand for? I think slow I bet it's slow runners of America. Yeah. Runners slow runners of America. Of, of America. 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 My country tis of thee. <laughs> well, it's certainly been a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> I'd, I'd just like to wish you good luck. Thank you very much. You very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Little, little, little. It certainly is a slow little. little tortoise. Well, I see now that they're getting ready. They're, they, yes, they're approaching. They're, oh, 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 and, and the race is off. And the hare is in the lead from the very beginning. The tortoise is left spinning in the dust. The hare is off and running, and the tortoise is off his nut. The hare is halfway around the track, and the tortoise isn't even in the race yet. The hare is just racing along, and wait, wait, wait. The hare is slowing down. He's, he's, he's stopped. The hare has stopped. You won't believe it, ladies and gentlemen, but the hare is taking a nap. You saw it here. Oh, my goodness. The tortoise is going to pick up an enormous lead. In fact, the tortoise has passed the sleeping hare. He's heading for the finish line. He's getting closer, close. He's crossed the finish line. Folks, the tortoise wins the race. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Congratulations. And the moral. The moral of the story is. The story is. The story. The moral of the story is slow and steady wins the race. Slow. And steady wins the race. <laughs> I like that. You that like was that? nifty. Mm -hmm, that's I like those morals, you know? You like them? Slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, that, that just is so encouraging, you know? It is? Yeah, because yeah. even though I'm not the fastest bear in the woods, that means I can win sometimes, too. That's right. You just keep plugging Ooh. away. I like that. I like those morals. Hey, mm -hmm. um, do you happen to have... Just one more, maybe. Just one more. Yes, oh, I yeah. do. What do you got? What do you got? This one is the story of the lion in love. Is this a love story? Yes. <laughs> Once there was a lion. He was a fierce lion. He could growl and prowl like no one else in the forest. Everyone was afraid of him, of course, because he had such big teeth and such fierce claws. Just the sight of him was enough to make grown men faint. <gasps> but one day, while prowling in the woods, this fierce lion spied a young lass frolicking in the wildflowers. 
How lovely she is, thought the lion. Gee, what a dish! It was love at first sight. There was only one thing to do. The lion had to declare his love. Only one thing to do, I gotta declare my love. <laughs> Howdy, honey. Gee, you're cute. <coughs> but the young lass was frightened, of course. <coughs> I can't say that I blame her. <coughs> the lion was puzzled. He was so much in love, he couldn't understand why the young lass didn't return his love. Do you think it was something I said? Then the lion had an idea. He would go to the young girl's father and ask for her hand in marriage. Yeah, after all, the way to a young girl's heart is through her daddy. <laughs> so off he went to his future father-in-law. But when he knocked at the door... Come in. Hiya! Wow! Geez, what's everybody get so excited about? I mean, why can't I fall in love like any other guy? Well, I guess that sort of shows the kind of fool you are. Now, wait a minute. I came here to ask for your daughter's hand. Whoa! Uh, I better rephrase that. Uh, I came here to ask if I could marry your little girl. Well, I see, but does she love you? Well, I'm the king of the forest. She'd be my queen. I don't know, Mr. Lion. It wouldn't work out. You have nothing in common. You come from two different worlds. Oh, yeah, but I love her so much. The father was scared of the lion, but he fought hard not to let his fear get the better of him. He had to think fast. Suddenly, the father had an idea. I know, I know. It'll never work out because you have such huge teeth and such fierce claws. Uh, what do you mean? Well, with those huge teeth and fierce claws, you might accidentally harm my little girl. I could never give my consent as long as you have those huge teeth. Oh, claws. You got a point there. The lion's heart was sad. Oh. What would life be without his love? <gasps> but then the lion had an idea. He remembered a sign he had seen a while ago in the village. Yeah. With a roar, he was off to the dentist. Roar. <laughs> Hiya, Doc. Uh, yeah, may I help you? Oh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> you see, I'm getting married in the morning. Ding dong, the bells are gonna chime. Yeah. Mm. But you see, my fiance, she's not nuts about big teeth and fierce claws. You mean? Yeah, pull them off. Oh, you're the boss. <laughs> Don't you forget it. But now listen, listen, tell me something now, Doc. Is this gonna hurt? Oh, not at all. I use laughing gas. Laughing gas? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Pull them off. So the dentist, true to his word, pulled all the lion's big teeth and fierce claws, and it didn't hurt a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, Doc. That was great. What do I owe you? Oh, nothing. The pleasure was all mine. <laughs> well, that was that. Now the lion could go back and claim his bride to be. Come in. Hiya, Daddy dear. Oh, it's you again, is it? Yep, your future son in law to be. Don't you, Daddy dear me? Why, without those huge teeth and fierce claws, you're nothing but a mangy old pussycat. Hmm? Now get out of here before I call the dog catcher on you. Oh, no, not the dog catcher. That, out of the no. king of the jungle was chased back into the forest, where, without his great big teeth and fierce claws, he became a respectable and beloved member of the community. But what will uh, Roger think of me? No, no, my dear. Think rather, what will you and Roger think? of each other. And the moral of the story is, even a beast can be tamed by love. Aw, isn't that cute? Yeah. yeah. Except, you know, it, it's sort of kind of a little sad in a way, because the lion, he doesn't get the girl. Well, yeah, but, but before he was mean and scary and stuff. Yeah, he, he growled a lot. And then he, and then he fell in love, and and then he was sort of nice, An wasn't he? Outstanding member of the community. Yeah. I like that moral too. Oh, good. Yeah. And I like the lion. He was not bad. No, he was not bad at all. Yeah. Oh, what else you got for me? What else we got? Okay. Well, um, we got another story about a feline. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's it called? It kind of ties in with the last one. Well, this yeah. is this is the story of Venus and the cat. Good. Once there was a cat. She was a nice cat, a loving cat. She could fall in love at the drop of a hat. Here I am in love again, right back at the start of that old game of cat and mouse between my head and heart. Here I am in love again, I don't ask for more than someone, anyone for me now. 
to worship and adore. It's not that I am fickle, it's just that I like men. It's just that I'm in love with love. <gasps> Oops, I'm in love again. Here I am in love again. I hear people say, it's only noon and you're in love for the second time today. Yes, Miss Cat was in love with love, that was certain. She would fall in love day in and day out. But every time she tried to tell of her love, it was the same old thing. She would approach her loved one, open her mouth, and say, Meow! Oh, nice kitty cat, nice pussy cat, good girl. Mm. Yuck! Another cat might have been discouraged, but for our Miss Cat, being in love was enough. Until one day, she met a prince. He was dashing, daring, and handsome. Tis I, the Prince of Pomerania. Everybody scrape. Everybody bow. And I will kiss the hand of Ania. Pretty woman here. Lovely lady now. Miss Cat, hearing this, rushed up to the prince, thrust out her paw, and said, Meow! Nice kitty cat. Nice girl. Good girl. <laughs> oh, I, the prince of Pomerania, am looking for a girl. One to share my life. To be Princess of Pomerania, she shall be my love. She shall be my wife. Poor Miss Cat knew then and there that she was for the first time in life truly in love. But how would the prince love her? If only, if only, Miss Cat made a wish. If only the prince would fall in love with me. And someone heard her heart's desire. Who are you? Tis I, Venus, a friend to lovers. I heard your wish. My wish? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so in love. If only he could love me, but that's impossible, I guess. Why impossible? The prince is looking for a lady to be his wife. Mm -hmm. Is that all? All? I'm not a lady, I'm just a cat. It's impossible. It was never meant to be. Ah, uh, with my help, perhaps. It's not all that impossible. With a stroke of my wand, I could change you into a beautiful lady, a lovely princess. Oh, please, wave your wand. Ah, but first, a warning. I can change your appearance, but I can't change your heart. Outside, you would be a lovely, beautiful princess, but on the inside, at heart, you will still be Miss Cat. Oh, I'll be a real princess. You'll see. Very well, little Miss Cat. Have no fear. You're a princess now, my dear. My goodness, I'm beautiful. It worked just like she said. And Miss Cat was off to meet her prince. Tis I, the Prince of Pomerania. Everybody scrape. Everybody bow. And I, the Prince of Pomerania. Stop! It is she. I've seen you in my dreams. And though impossible it seems, it is my love, my own princess. It is she. Come here, my love, to me, and will forever happy be. My darling, for all my life, you shall be my wife. It was love at first sight. The prince fell madly in love with the beautiful princess. Little did he know that his beautiful princess was just little Miss Cat. 
Venus watched this love affair closely. It seemed that Miss Cat had indeed become a beautiful princess and the prince truly loved her, but Venus was not sure. Would Miss Cat pass the test? She would soon find out. One day, as the prince and his new love were walking along, Venus felt it was time. This would be the test. As the prince and Miss Cat strolled along, Venus sent a mouse to scurry across the walk. Was the prince in love with the princess, or was the princess still just Miss Cat at heart? Well, as soon as Miss Cat saw the mouse, she could help herself no longer. She pounced upon it, seized it in her teeth, and happily brought it to her prince. The prince had but one thing to say. Yuck! Oh, gross! Ooh, yuck. Ooh. Miss Cat Blech. failed the test. Ooh, yuck. Meow. It just goes to show that it's always best to just be yourself. <laughs> oh, there, I dozed off there for a minute, sure didn't did. I? <laughs> silly me, sure silly me. Great, yeah. oh, oh, where were we? We were we were reading Aesop's fables. Oh, Remember? yeah, uh, Aesop. 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 Don't tell me. Aesop, um, he was a storyteller. Mm -hmm, that's right. right. Yeah. And what kind of stories did he tell? Oh, he told he told all those fables. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And fables are those stories that have animals in them a lot. Uh-huh. I can relate to that. Yes. Yes. And every single fable has a moral. That's right. Right. And a moral, I know that too. Don't tell me. Don't coach me or anything like that. A moral is the lesson we learn from the fable. Terrific. See? Ter I listen. I pay attention. You pay attention. Yeah. Okay, well. I hope you haven't run out of fables yet. Oh, no. No? He, no, he has lots of them. Oh, really? And okay, so tell, do me, I. tell me another fable. Okay. I need to, let me get comfy here a second. Get comfy. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, here. Here. Oh, 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 soft. Oh. There we go. Oh. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> How about this one? This is the story of the frogs desiring a king. Lazy day, drifting in the pond, not a single cloud in view. Lazy day, floating with the dream, nothing in the world to do. Born, we're in the doldrums, born, who beat those bold drums? Will lead us on to victory. Lazy day, no one here to say, pull yourselves together, men. We could use someone to inspire us to bigger things again. Santa victory because we're born. Lazy day, no one we're here in to the say. Drums. Hold yourselves together, man. Born. We could use someone to those bold drums. Eyes to bigger things again. But who? But who? What we need is a king, a king, a king, a king is just a thing to perk us up and give us back a song. Yeah, a king, a king, we'll be his loyal subjects, a king is what we needed all along. A royal regal majesty to rule and reign so princely, with robes and gems and scepters, and crowned all jeweled and tinselly. Yes, I can see it now. The king, in all his glory, 
so handsome, so fierce, so grand. His word is law, his anger is terrible, his justice is swift. Long live the king! Wait a minute. What's the matter? Where are we going to get a king? Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't think of that. Well, I got it, I got it, I got it. Well, don't give it to me, whatever it is. No, I mean, I know where we'll get a king. Mm. One of us must beseech the all-powerful Jupiter and ask him to send us a king. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Jupiter can do anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. One of us should go to Jupiter. And all we have to do is say, give us a king, and Jupiter, he can do anything, so that's he'll give right. us one. One of us has to go to Jupiter. One, uh, one of us, uh, uh, One of us, one of us is you. No. Yeah, sure. I can't. Oh, but you're so good at that. Oh, no, I don't know how. Please. Just oh. this one time. Just once? Yeah. <sighs> All right. Come on. All right. Ooh, yeah. Uh -huh. Don't be afraid. Okay. Beseech your way. Okay. Oh, Jupiter. Louder, he won't hear you. Okay. Oh, Jupiter! Louder! Oh, Jupiter! Speak, my little friend. Oh, oh, oh Jupiter, king of all kings, uh, our lives have become dull and ordinary. We find no pleasure, we see no hope. Jupiter, you who can do anything, send to us a king. Send us a king to lead us, a king to guide us, a king to brighten our days. Oh, Jupiter! I have heard your plea. You shall have your king. Oh, you... <laughs> this is a king? Well, I guess so. Oh. Why don't you say something to him? Find me? Out. Me? Why me? Well, I don't know. Just say anything. Anything? Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning, Your Majesty. Nothing. Let me, let me try something else here. <clears throat> nice weather we're having, your all-powerful ship. Huh. What's going on here? Hey, I got an idea. Why don't you uh, nudge him? Nudge him? Yeah, nudge him. Nuts. Nudge him, nudge him. I'm not going to nudge him. Just like this. Nudge him, nudge him, nudge him. Nothing. Huh. Huh. Hey, wait a minute. I got an idea. Yeah? Yeah, watch this. <laughs> What are you doing up here? <sighs> wow, this is nifty. Yeah? Boy, you can see all over town up here. Yeah? Yeah, come on up and join me. <laughs> all right, just a minute. Oh, boy. Yeah. <sighs> ah, nifty, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that. Hey, oh, you can... Me. This is, uh... Yeah. This is, uh... Hey. Yeah? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think I'm thinking what you're thinking. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think I'm thinking what you're thinking, and if you are thinking what I think you're thinking, you're thinking we got ourselves a dud king. That's right. That's oh, what I'm thinking. Boy, how about that Jupiter yep. giving us a dud king? <laughs> yeah. Now one of us has to go back to Jupiter and ask yeah. him to send us a new king. That's right. One of us will have... One, one of... Uh, 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 and that one of us is you. Oh, no. Please. No. Just one more time. One more. That's all. Come on! All right. Whoa! <laughs> uh, <clears throat> oh, Jupiter! Louder! All right. Oh, Jupiter! Louder! All right. Oh, Jupiter! What is it now? Oh, um, <clears throat> sorry to bother you again, sir, but um, you know that king that you sent us before. <laughs> Well, uh, he's a dub. What did you say? I uh, now, no offense, sir, but you know, we sort of wanted to uh, serve a more exciting king than that. This one sort of sits there like a lump on a log, if you know what I mean. Now, if you can send us a king that's irresistible, that's all-powerful, that's fierce, and all-wonderful, oh, we would think it was real great, Your Highness. Very well. You shall have your mighty and all-powerful king. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, where is he? Where'd he go? I don't know. Huh. He said he'd send us a king. He's got to be around here somewhere. Let's look for him. All right, I'll go this way, you go that way. All right. <laughs> oh, kingy. Here, king. Here, king. Here, king. Here, king. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Oh, King, where are you? Come out, come out, wherever you are. Oh, King, oh, King, oh, King, oh, King. Oh, King? Uh-huh. Uh-oh. <clears throat> and the moral of the story is, be careful what you ask for, because you just may get it. <laughs> Oh boy, I kind of feel sorry for those froggies, you know? Oh, yeah, well, that was kind of a sad fable, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, yeah. but they, they kind of got what they asked for. That's true, that's exactly what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And then they got their wish. Yes. That's kind of frightening, isn't yeah, it? sometimes it doesn't yeah. work out. Well, listen, uh, do you have another one? Is it a spooky one? It's kind of a spooky one, yeah. Ooh. It's got ghosts in it and stuff. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, good. you know oh, who else is in it? Who? Your cousin, Big Harry. No kidding. No kidding. Does he get to be a star? Yes. Oh, boy. Two man. stars in the family now. Yeah, I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay, what, what's the name of this one? This one is called The Boy Who Wanted to Tremble. He wanted to tremble? He wanted to tremble. Well, we'll see. All right. <laughs> Once there was a farmer who had a son. This son was very big and very strong and a very good person as well, but he just wasn't very smart. He wanted to learn. He studied hard in school, but he just couldn't get anything through his thick skull. His father was distraught. I'm distraught, and I'm worried too. What's gonna happen to that boy? You know, he was six years old before he learned to wave bye-bye, and you can't make a living doing that. Oh, uh, hey, Pa, hey, Pa, can I help you? Can I do anything for you, hey, Pa? Have you milked the cow yet? You, well, I try. I really did, you know. I put the bucket underneath her like you showed me, and I told her to let her rip, and nothing came out. And then you know what I did? I took her tail, and I kept pumping it up and down like that. I saw that in a movie once. And you know what she did? She kicked you. How'd you guess that, Bob? Huh? Just a lucky guess, son. <gasps> Sheesh! Now it so happened that there was a graveyard near this house, and everyone in the village was afraid to go past it at night. Everyone said it made them tremble to go near it in the dark, when goodness knows what strange creatures might be about. But Ralph didn't understand what they meant by trembling. When people spoke of how they trembled near the graveyard, it sounded to Ralph like trembling was a wonderful thing. And since everybody but Ralph knew how to tremble, Ralph decided he would make it his life's work to learn how, just like everyone else. <gasps> Hey, hey, Pa, yeah. I now know what I want to do with my life. All I have to do is learn one more thing, and then I'll be ready to go out into the big wide world. One more thing? Yeah. What's that? I'm going to learn how to tremble. Sheesh! Yeah, everybody talks about it so much, it really must be very much in demand. <laughs> hey, is trembling very hard to do, Pa? For you, kid? I don't know. Hmm. The next day, a friend of the father's came to call. <laughs> Hiya, Jim. Why so gloom? It's that boy of mine. I keep telling him he has to learn a trade. Yeah? You know what he's finally decided upon? <laughs> no, what's that? Trembling. <laughs> Trembling's a trade? Oh, what does he know? I can't talk to that boy. He is trembling on the brain now. <laughs> he wants to tremble, huh? Yeah. <laughs> hey, what have you got in mind? Listen, tonight you just send him on an errand that'll take him by the graveyard. Yeah. I'll do the rest. <laughs> the father did as his friend suggested. Late that night, near the graveyard. <sighs> ooh, ooh. Um, the name's Ralph, and who are you? Ooh. I already told you, you're repeating yourself. Who are you? Ooh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I know you're a burglar, that's what you are. And if you're a burglar, if you're going to try to stop me, I'm going to have to pop you one now. Uh -huh. So you are a burglar. I'll show you. Oh, jeez, what a nerd! Now there was a pretty kettle of fish. Now the friend was angry, and the father was more distraught than ever. I'm more distraught than ever. It was time for action. The father decided he would send his son out into the big wide world. Perhaps there he would learn to take life more seriously. And maybe he would even learn a trade. He gave Ralph $50 and sent him on his way. Gee, thanks for the money, Pa. Now you just watch. I'll learn how to tremble in jig time. I don't care if you learn how to tremble in waltz time. Now just get going. Now Ralph was alone in the big wide world. 
On his very first night out alone in the big, wide world, Ralph found himself very uncomfortable at an inn. Oh, oh, Mr. Innkeeper, Mr. Innkeeper, um, I don't want to say I'm uncomfortable or anything. I mean, I love your nice, big, soft beds and all that. But you know something? I just can't seem to fall asleep without my bedtime story. Tell me something. How much does a bedtime story cost? I got 50 bucks. Is that enough? 50 bucks is just about right for a bedtime story. Oh, here you are. <laughs> Jeez, what a nerd. Hey, now look. You see that window over there? Yep. See the castle outside the window? Yep. That castle's haunted. Ooh. And the king of the castle has offered his daughter's hand in marriage to anyone who would stay in the castle for three nights running. Oh, I don't think I could run for three nights. I mean stay in there for three whole nights. Oh, oh I get you. All night long. Yep. With the monsters. Yep. And the beasts. And the goblins. Yep. Ooh, it doesn't make you tremble just to think about it. No. I'm trembling. Ooh. Ralph saw a golden opportunity here. He had always wanted to learn to tremble, and here was his chance, a castle that made everybody tremble. Yeah, and what do I got to lose? If I don't learn to tremble, I could always settle for marrying the princess and living happily ever after. Which shows you how smart he was. The next day, Ralph went to the king to apply for the job of staying three nights in the haunted castle. Oh, Mr. King, sir? Yeah? I understand you have a castle that's quite haunted and requires staying in. That's right. But are you sure you want to go through with this? Oh. Well, I used to be a natural redhead, and I stayed there one night. Look at me now. Mighty lovely, I'm sure. Gee, I had no idea that trembling was so difficult. But I'm going to try. <laughs> All right, now look, here's the deal. You can take three things with you into the castle. Well, you stay there for three nights running. Oh, I don't know if I could run. I three mean, three nights. whole nights. Oh well. Yeah. Now look, if you make it, you disenchant the castle. You get my daughter's hand as a reward, and you get to be king of the whole country. Oh boy! Vice <laughs> king, actually. Well, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, now what three things do you want to take with you? Oh, let me see now. Um, I'll have a turkey. All right. Um, uh, I'll take some fire. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, and I'll take a bowling ball. A bowling ball? My bowling ball, in case I get bored. All right, kid, it's your hide. <laughs> <laughs> that very night, Ralph was staying at the haunted castle. No sooner had he sat down to eat his roast turkey when a horrible monster appeared out of nowhere. Buggy, buggy, buggy. My, you look scrumptious to me. It looks like you're going to have to be my lunch. Oh, are you hungry? You want some turkey? Turkey? I'm a monster, didn't you know? We eat people up all the time. Oh, really? Oh, it's a tough job, all right. Yeah, but I guess somebody's got to do it. Hey, but uh, don't you get tired of the same old thing once in a while? Haven't you ever dreamed of a nice, big, juicy turkey, huh? Well, now that you mention it. Yeah, that white meat, huh? Doesn't it make your mouth water, huh? Yeah, but I've got to rip you to uphold, you know. Oh, come on, look, have some turkey. I'll even give you the drumstick. The drumstick? Yeah. Uh, you promise not to tell anyone. I've got a reputation to uphold, you know. Your secret's safe with me. Ah, <laughs> turkey, huh? And so the monster sat down to dinner with Ralph. They ate and ate. They ate the whole turkey. It took them all night, and then the clock struck six. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Hmm, I had that just a minute ago. Bye bye, bye bye bye. Are you dead yet? Oh no, no, no. But I did have a wonderful dinner with some guy whose name I didn't catch. But you know something funny? I didn't tremble a bit. Yeah. The king was amazed, of course. I'm amazed, of course. But Ralph was only a little disappointed. After all, Ralph knew he still had two nights to go. On the second night, Ralph was again in the haunted castle. No sooner had he settled down to go to sleep when a ghost appeared. This time it wasn't a friend playing a trick on him either. The ghost put his cold hands around Ralph's neck. Ooh, 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 is this trembling? Ooh, ooh, uh, uh, no, no, that's not trembling. That's not trembling at all. That's shivering, you know that? You know why? It's because your hands are cold as ice, that's why. Yeah. I have an idea, Mr. Ghost. Why don't you come up to my bedroom? I got a nice fireplace up there. You can toast your hands. I haven't been warm since I've been dead. Oh, you poor thing. You've been dead long. Not long, but time drags by when you've nothing to do. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know, I was looking forward to a very dull night myself. I'm certainly glad you happened along, or I wouldn't have had anybody to talk to. <laughs> 
for some reason, nobody comes around here much. Probably the location. If we were closer to the freeway, more people would stop by. Yeah. Hmm. Ralph and the ghost talked on and on into the night until daybreak. Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Are you dead yet? No, 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 but I did spend the evening having a very nice talk with a gentleman whose name I didn't catch. He was very, very cold, you know. Certainly is a good thing I brought that fire along. But you know something? I still didn't tremble a bit. The king was amazed, of course. I'm amazed, of course. And Ralph would have been completely discouraged if he hadn't remembered he had one more night in the castle in which to learn to tremble. That night... Oh, hello there, sir. Uh, what you got there under your arm there? It's a skull. Ooh, ooh, really now? Yeah. now what you gonna do with that? Do you see those bones over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to set them up like bowling pins and knock them over with this skull. Oh, go on with you. No, yeah. Look at that skull there. It isn't even round enough. Hey, do I have something for you? Yeah. <laughs> looky, looky, looky. Why, <laughs> I haven't seen one of those since I've been dead. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we bowl together? We'll play a penny a pin. Make it easy on yourself. Terrific! <laughs> wow! Yeah! I'll let you use my skull! They bowled far into the night until... The clock struck six and Ralph bid the monster a fond farewell. Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Aren't you dead yet? No, no, no. No! But you know something? I did bowl the whole night with some nice gentleman whose name I don't remember. Uh, but you know something? I never did tremble. You still didn't tremble? No, I'm a complete failure after all. I can't learn to tremble. What are you <laughs> sniffling about? You get my daughter's hand in marriage? <laughs> And so Ralph and the king's daughter were married. Ralph was happy, of course, since being a prince is considered a very important job. And of course, everyone thought that Ralph had done quite well, considering how dumb he was. But as Ralph told his new wife, the princess, You know, honey, I'll never really be happy until I learn how to tremble. Even though she thought this was very silly, she saw how unhappy it was making her poor husband, Prince Ralph. Sheesh! She decided she would do something about it. I went down to the dungeon and I got a basket full of spiders and bugs and creepy crawly things and stuff like that. Yuck! But it's always worked for me. Ooh, yuck, sis. That's disgusting. Yuck, blech, She sneaked down into the room where Ralph was taking a nap and... Ooh! Oh, what are these things? Oh, look, dear, you're trembling. Oh, my goodness. By George, I think I've got it. But you know something, honey? Yeah? If this is trembling, it sure isn't what it's cracked up to be. And the moral of the story is, sometimes our faults can be turned into gifts. Now that's my kind of a fable, you yeah. know? A nice happy ending, mm -hmm. and Ralph got the girl. Ralph got yeah, it. Even though he was, uh, stuff, shall yeah. we say, no Einstein. No Einstein, no, yeah. no, but he persevered. Yeah, that's encouraging too, you know? <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I mean, even though I'm not the smartest bear in the woods, oh, you're I, can ha I can be a winner, too. That's true. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I like fables. Do you have any more? Well, I don't have any more in this. No, no. No more. But you can get some at the library. I can. For example, or ask your teacher. Nifty. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. Okay. So then you can tell me some more fables. Sure. Next time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>